Hi everyone, I'm Will Black and I'm the Director of Business Development for Video Intelligence. Video Intelligence is a contextual video platform that matches contextually relevant videos from content partners to publishers' web pages, opening up new revenue streams without compromising user experience. Today, I'm going to recap a presentation my colleague Olivier and myself gave at DIG Lisbon a few weeks ago. At VI, we believe that context is everything. Here, you can see the definition of context from the dictionary. If you apply this definition to our industry, context would be all the little things that make up your web page. The ads, the text, the video, images, and everything else that your readers' eyeballs touch. What we hope to show you today is our evidence for the importance of context to publishers and advertisers and ultimately give you food for thought as you make decisions about your video strategy moving into 2019 and beyond. So first up here, we're going to look at an ad that shows the power of storytelling. And we're then going to speak to some clever people who are real experts in the field of neuroscience and linguistics and ultimately give you an idea for why you should be considering context. To get us going, you've got a classic ad which has all the right ingredients. Think about the ad you just saw. We don't see the Stella until the very end of the story, so let's have a look at some of the reasons behind that placement. In order to understand just how powerful context is and what the effect it has on us, we need to understand exactly what's going on inside the head of somebody who's engaged with a story. Here, Dr. Ali Jennings of UCL explains the hormones that are released by stories. If you think about the emotions that are actually triggered when you listen to a story, it's absolutely fascinating when you think about what's happening to the brain itself. This is just like a story arc in a film or television. We may initially feel stress, which draws our attention into a situation's context, before moving on to empathy and then reward once the story is complete. So when you first get introduced to a story, your brain releases quite a lot of cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And what that does is it instantly attracts your attention to the beginning of the story. Then, as we follow the character, and as we start to see how they are addressing the problem, we start to release different kinds of chemicals which allow us to empathize with the character. Then when the character realizes the solution, we release dopamine specifically, which is a chemical which rewards us. And then when we finally reach the end of the story, it's a perfect storm, stress goes, it's all dopamine, and uh, empathy. So now we understand a little bit more about how a well-structured story, such as a video ad, or indeed a great piece of video content, can release chemicals that have a tangible effect on us. 
Let's think back to the commercial that we just watched. Initially, your stress levels are peaked. The pilot is trying to escape the enemy. He's been in a crash. He's wounded. He's now being chased. Ultimately, the barman wants to help him, but the thought of wasting just a drop of Stella was ultimately too much for him to bear. The Stella was just too good. But what about the product itself? How is that getting involved? What's so incredible about stories is they're empathy machines. So if you hook someone with a really good story, you force their brain to mirror the emotions and the feelings of the character in the story. If you manage to make your character really grateful to your product, then whoever's watching it doesn't really have a choice. They are gonna be grateful as well. And on top of that, when you reach the end of a story that you've been really into, you release a huge amount of oxytocin, which is a hormone which basically makes you more trusting in that situation. So whether you like it or not, you end up trusting the solution, which in this case is your product. So again, think back to the Stella ad, how it made you feel. In the film, ultimately, the hero is Stella, and in kind of a roundabout way, it saved everyone, and so we're grateful. So now that we understand a little bit more about the power of stories and how they affect us, but ultimately, what does context have to do with it? Here, we're gonna hear a little bit more from Dr. Jennings, and he'll describe just how the brain behaves and how surroundings affect our reception of messages. It's really important to judge where you put your advert in terms of the context. What the brain does is it can choose what it pays attention to. You're constantly scanning your environment for stuff which is important to you. And if something like that comes up, you will pay attention to it. If you are reading a piece of content and someone has put an advert in there that has no relevance to you, you will simply not even see it your brain does not allow that information in. So for publishers, you've got to take this into account. There's no point putting a beautifully crafted advert about trainers into a whole piece about the stock market because people reading about that are just not interested. It will never get through that first informational filter. So what we he see here in this quote from Dr. Jennings is that the context the content, the environment in which advertising is displayed is ultimately so important. Let's think back to what he just said about context. Content about trainers on a page about the stock market is not going to register with the consumer. Think about the way in which you consume words, pictures, sound, and moving image online. You're on a mission or a journey of discovery or possibly education. You're trying to find the solution to a problem and the web page that you're on is the way you're doing that. If there are blockers or irrelevancies on that page, you're going to ignore them. There's a common industry term for this, and we've all heard it before. It's banner blindness. But this blindness goes beyond just banners and extends to irrelevant video content and native solutions. Hence, we believe contextually placed video is the key to a great user experience. And then finally, on the topic of neuroscience, Dr. Jennings explains what happens when this all goes wrong. Because stories are so good at making us learn things, that's kind of what they're for, you have to be so careful what you allow your content to be paired up with. Because if you land your brand in the middle of a story about something you do not want associated with your brand, there's nothing you can do. It's been linked and you can't unlink it. So you absolutely have to beware of what story your advert is stepping into. Brand safety is really not just something at, that the advertisers should worry about. It's really a problem for publishers as well. Poor content or risky content on a page could damage the perception of your brand as a publisher. Ultimately, you should be chatting with your editorial teams because they are going to be very worried about this as well. And what we learned from Dr. Jennings is once it's been linked, you can't unlink it. Storytelling within your advertising is one thing, but it can be made even more powerful by ensuring that your story sits within a relevant context. Make your brand a part of the wider story by incorporating contextual page content, and you can increase the power of empathy and trust generated by your web pages and your partner's advertising. In other words, the more contextually relevant everything a user sees on the page is, the more likely that user truly is to consume the entire page. 
Brands, of course, have to be careful how they tell their stories because, of course, they've got to relate to the particular audience they're appealing to. So that voice is really important. So what you've got to do is you've got to find some way of mapping the register you're using in terms of your tone of voice to the audience and what they expect to hear and that they're comfortable with. We know how hard brands work to develop and tell their stories and narratives, but there's got to be a neat fit between what the message is, what the product is, and where it's displayed. So whenever you're introducing content onto your page, be it an ad or editorial content, you must make sure there's a fit between the page and the content. If there's no fit, there'll be no engagement. And without engagement, ultimately, user experience will suffer and ad revenues will go down. So ultimately, that's it. Uh, thank you for your time. And hopefully you found this both enlightening and uh, enjoyable.